Good morning, Park Hill Christian Church. Welcome to Crossroads Worship this morning. If you would, please stand and sing with us as we sing praises this morning. What mercy was revealed, what tenderness and peace. Fate was surely sealed until he rescued me. His pardon for my sin, his bounty for my need. From slavery and shame, I am redeemed. And heaven can't contain the glory of the sun. Jesus is the Christ, the saving one. Love has made a way, the grave is overcome, Jesus is the Christ, the saving one. No fear can hold me down, nor darkness steal my joy, for blood has been poured out, the enemy destroyed, death could not hold him down. Cross was not enough to steal away his throne, for he is God. Heaven can contain the glory of the Son. Jesus is the Christ, the saving one. Love has made a way, the grave is overcome. Jesus is the Christ, the saving one. is the Christ, the saving one. His love has made a way, the grave is overcome. Jesus is the Christ, the saving have a seat. Boy, it looks like summer in here. <laughs> it is good to see everyone this morning. Um, we are privileged to have with us some guests. I'd like to introduce from the North Little Rock Gideons. In the back here, we have Jim Lipsy and Mike Hotstedler. Good to have you all. At, at this time, uh, I'm going to ask for Jim to come on up. We're going to... Um, talk a little bit about the North Little Rock Gideons. As we do, there will be a couple of offering plates that are going around the room if you would like to donate to this worthy cause. There's also some booklets on your table that you can look at um, to find out more information about them. But for now, I'm just going to turn it over to Jim. Jim, thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving of your time. God bless this gentleman. When are you coming back? Well, these are a few of the comments that we hear from the inmates at the Plastic County Jail in Little Rock. They're very appreciative of the Gideons and auxiliary members that, that come there. Our camp, the North Little Rock camp, goes to the prison, uh, jail every fourth Monday evening, and we pass out New Testaments to the inmates that are there. And we also teach from the Bible for those wanting to know more about the Word of God. Now, sometimes we have to sit or speak in a room that has no uh, seats for the inmates to sit there, but they still come to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
In a dark world, Jesus is the light, and he's the hope for many who've had neither in their lives before. Good morning. My name is Jim Lipsy. Uh, together with my prayer partner, Mike Hopsteller, we're from the North Little Rock Gideons. It's our pleasure to speak here at Park Hill Christian Church. I wish to thank uh, Reverend Hodges and, and Reverend uh, uh, Cheryl for inviting us here this morning. It's just a great blessing to be here. Now, we Gideons are an uh, uh, organization of professional and businessmen. We're laymen from evangelical and Protestant churches in the local area. And uh, we're called by God for one purpose, and that's to witness to the lost of this world for Jesus Christ and distribute his holy word. Now, we Gideons are a worldwide organization. We have over 260,000 members. We're established in uh, 200 countries around the world, and we distribute God's word in 107 different languages. We uh, are an extension of the local church in that we're able to reach areas with the gospel that might be closed to our regular church missionaries. As a partner in our ministry, our local churches help us distribute 82.4 million scriptures around the world last year. This year our goal is even more, 90 million scriptures worldwide. Now you may be familiar with our, our uh, hotel Bible like the one I'm holding here. Uh, for example, for only $5 you can place such a Bible somewhere around the world and it has the potential of reaching 2,300 people during its six year lifespan. Now we get into also place uh, scriptures in such areas as uh, hospitals, in uh, nursing homes and shelters. We place them also in uh, a dentist, dentist and doctor's offices. We give them to our police and fire department personnel. We pass them out to our military. We also go to universities and colleges and uh, give them to students there. And we place them in local jails and prisons. And where we have access to the students, we place uh, New Testaments uh, with the students there in both public and private schools. Now, how can you help us, Gideons? We have uh, three specific areas you can help us with. First, we ask that you pray for our ministry. Uh, there are many uh, Gideons and auxiliary members around the world that are in countries where they're persecuted uh, by local authorities and by other religious groups. So we ask that you pray for them, pray for their safety and perseverance as they distribute God's word to their own people. Now, second, we seek new members for our ministry. Our members come from our local churches. Without you, our ministry could not exist. Our members are recommended by their pastors before they become Gideons. Now, if you're a business or a professional man, if you're a manager, a supervisor, a team leader, uh, a business owner, uh, please consider joining our association. We need new members. And also our wives play a very important part in our ministry also being our prayer partners and having their very own scripture distribution points. So we highly encourage them to join our auxiliary. Now, a third way you can help us is by using our Gideon Card Bible Program. Now, your church has uh, two displays uh, with Gideon cards, and each Gideon card has instructions on how you may use them to help uh, place Bibles in a loved one's name somewhere around the world. Now, the Gideon cards are free with the purchase of Bibles, and remember, when you send a Gideon card, you send the word and you change a life. Now, God's word today is as relevant as it was 100 years ago or even 1,000 years ago. For you see, God's word doesn't change. For all men are like grass, and their glories are like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. That's from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 24 and 5. Now, Gideons around the world are ready and willing to help win lost souls to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but many don't have the resources to purchase Bibles for their own people. This is where our local churches can help. Uh, you can purchase Bibles and place them, again, somewhere around the world, and all the contributions that you give uh, are used solely to place and, and purchase, or purchase and place Bibles. We thank each of you for your prayers and your support, and may God continue to bless Park Hill Christian Church and Pastor Hodges and his staff. Thank you so much for having us here. Lord of all creation of water, earth, and 
the heavens of your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are. Spirit with you because he is in this house today. Amen. As our elder would like to lead us in prayer. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you, our Heavenly Father, for the fellowship that is ours in Jesus Christ. As we partake of this bread and cup, we are surrounded by the love and friendship of those who love our Lord Jesus. On this Sunday of Pentecost, may we keep the Holy Spirit in us, and we ask you, Lord, to bless this bread and cup, and bless us as we are united in our observance that Jesus gave us to remember him. We are thankful for the Holy Spirit he left to us, and to worship together with others and in this church. We have to ask us in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he blessed it, he broke it, and he said, take and eat this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim that the Lord is coming. Thank you. time of prayer this morning. We have some that uh, you need to be lifting up, please. Uh, please remember Jerry Reddick. Um, he fell this past week and dislocated his shoulder or skinned himself up pretty good. Um, he's going to go to his primary care tomorrow. Uh, be lifting up Mike White, who had hip replacement surgery on Thursday. He went home to, uh, yesterday. And uh, also be in prayer for our youth and adult sponsors who left early this morning uh, on their mission trip to Bainbridge, Georgia. And also please be remembering those who are being afflicted by the floods throughout our area and beyond. With these and those on our own hearts and minds and those on our prayer list in the bulletin, would you join me now in prayer, please? 
Lord, even with all that demands our attention in this world, we joyfully gather as one family to praise you because you are great and wonderful. Especially on this day, we celebrate the work of your Holy Spirit throughout history. You sent your Spirit all those years ago to bring life. Through the events on the day of Pentecost, your Spirit gave birth to the church. And today, your spirit is still active in the world, bringing renewal and hope to your people. O oh God, you poured out your spirit to guide your disciples, to bless your people with various gifts, and to empower your church to continue Jesus' ministry. If we're honest, though, we oftentimes ignore the Holy Spirit or resist the guidance you offer us. We've even ignored or dismissed the gifts of others and failed to live in ways that reveal Christ's love for the world. For this and so much more, forgive us. Help us to allow your spirit to work in us and through us to change our lives and to change the lives of those around us. Father, thank you for the opportunity to serve. We ask for safe travels for our youth group and thank you for the work they will do and the love they will share for your glory in Georgia. Thank you also for the work our friends here this morning from the Gideons do. Continue to bless their ministry as they strive to be a blessing to this hurting world. We pray all this and so much more in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
at this time, if the children would like to go ahead and go to Children's Chapel, that'd be great. Oh, got to be real close to it. Oh, you didn't say be real low. You said close to it. Good morning. Now, you didn't expect something real serious from me today, did you? There's not a whole lot more serious than the Holy Spirit, though. Acts 1, 3, 9, with glasses. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave. Do not leave Jerusalem. But wait for the gift of my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. In Acts 2, 2, 4, the story continues. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house while they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit enabled them. If that didn't a visual, I don't know what is. But we're gonna get this we're gonna get the sleeves ready here. We're even gonna take off the bangles because they're clanking loud. Cause this is a story about my experience with the Holy Spirit. And I'd like to share it so it's from my heart. As you know, John and I started dating, many of you do, when I was in junior high. And I'll never forget meeting his dad for the first time. I was introduced to him in the way of a dinner. Now, his mom was busy cooking in the kitchen, and his dad was in a back sun porch. My father-in-law was sitting at an old desk chair and he was listening to the static of an old CB desk radio. Do you remember CB radios? How, how many of you had CB radios? John? All right, all right. How many of you remember your handle? Oh, oh Paula's got her handle. All right, all right. Well, for those of you who know, it's Citizens Band, and for those of you who don't know, it's Citizen Band. That's what the CB stands for, all right? And like miniature CB enthusiasts, John's dad spent hours talking to people from all over the country. A lot of things had to come together for Mr. Dreer to actually have a conversation with someone at a long distance. You know it's antenna position, radio frequency, atmospheric conditions, and volume. I'll never forget the night when he spoke to someone in Australia. So I want you to keep this CD, CB image in your mind as I share with you my thoughts and experience with the Holy Spirit. All right, let's fast forward from junior high a few years. And John and I are married. Our oldest, Lauren, is eight months old. And we are moving to Arlington, Texas, where he's been transferred with his job with the phone company. We pull up to the house we're renting. Our moving van is behind us. Now, Lauren, eight months, is cranky, and I'm exhausted, but I'm excited. See, I've not seen this house. 
John had made all those arrangements while I was here in North Little Rock. So I was excited. This was going to be a surprise. Well, it was a surprise. Because when John and I stepped foot into that house, there was a strange woman in our kitchen. Now, think about this. We're in our house, and there is a strange woman in our kitchen, a house we had to unlock at the front door. So this lady greets me with a smile. Lauren is beyond fussy. She rushes me to a rocker. She sits me down. I begin to nurse this very hungry baby. And at my elbow, she puts a plate of food and a cold glass of milk. And I now know she's not a stranger. She is a saint, complete saint. So she is packing up this kitchen and talking while I'm eating, and Lauren's eating. Turns out she's the wife of a missionary. She's the mother of three children, and her husband was starting a new church in Dallas. They were the former tenants of our rent house, and they were supposed to be out of our house and into their new house a block away, but a glitch in closing had delayed their plans. While she told her story, our movers moved the little bit of furniture, some boxes, including a piano, and tucked them away in our garage. That day, marked a beginning of a very important relationship to me. But for the life of me, I cannot remember her name. My new friend was helpful, kind, thoughtful, and full of questions. We hadn't known each other but a few days, and she asked me over the phone, are you born again? And I answered, um, I think so. It was more of a question than a statement. I'd heard the term born again, but at 24 years old, it seemed awfully abstract to me. It kind of seemed like more something I would have to earn than something I would have or be. I was baptized in fifth grade, and like Jesus described to the Pharisee, Nicodemus in John 3, 5, I knew I was born of the water, but just not so sure about being born of the Spirit. What my friend did not know when she asked me that question was, I just didn't feel like my faith was my own. I had lost my faith my freshman year of college. I'd taken this course, John took it too, it's called The Ascent of Man, it was taught by Dr. Schneider. Now, he was an immigrant scientist that actually worked on the Manhattan Project, which you may know gave us all of the relative information that helped us build atomic bombs. Now, the book was called The Ascent of Man, and it was fascinating. It chronicled the birth of mankind, scientific discoveries. It was amazing. And Dr. Schneider was captivating. The first assignment was the first chapter of Genesis. So I thought, oh, we're going somewhere. But he never mentioned it during the entire course. When I finished that course, I was a committed vegetarian. I'll let you work out that connection later. And a floundering Christian. And yes... My father paid for that course, and he would have been appalled had he known. We lived in that house in Arlington for nine months, and that stranger in my kitchen helped me by action, word, and prayer to find my faith. My friend didn't have a car, and I loaned her my car every time she needed it. She kept that tank full, and believe me, it was much cleaner than I keep it now. And it was on one such occasion that I actually, after getting the car back from her, drove to Dallas to help my roommate and friend, Jenny Elder, move into their new apartment. Well, I got into the back of my car, and I looked and grabbed Lauren's 
uh, diaper bag, and there was this huge roll of trash bags. So I re immediately went into Jenny's apartment, called her from Jenny's phone. They were called landlines, by the way. And I called her, my friend, and said, you've left a roll of trash bags in my car, and I'll drop them off on my way home. And she said, no, those are for you. You're going to need them. Use them all. What I didn't know at the time was Jenny had a living room mountain full of dish wrap and newspaper and not a trash bag to her name. See, I heard the whisper of the Holy Spirit because I had goosebumps all over my body. I remember another time when that kitchen stranger called me one Saturday morning and she said on the phone, something's bothering you. I'd like for you to tell me. Before I even knew what I was saying, I said, I really miss my sister. I'm not close to my sister. But I wanted to be close to my sister. And my friend prayed with me the first experience I'd ever had, praying over the phone. I immediately hung up from that conversation and called my sister, and it was the first real adult conversation we had had where we didn't talk about mom, we didn't talk about kids, we just talked. I'm hearing the whisper a little louder, and I can tell you my friend has a CB radio, but it's not citizen band, it's Christian band. And let me tell you, she has her volume turned up. And I wanted some of that. By her example, I learned to pray. And with her help, I learned to study the Bible. And bit by bit, my faith grew with our relationship. By the time we moved back to Little Rock, I could say with confidence, I am born again. I know the Holy Spirit. I have my own Christian band radio, and now my frequency is prayer, and my faith is my volume, and I am turning it up in this church every day because so many of you have really loud Christian band radio. And that is a blessing. Today, this day of Pentecost, we celebrate the Holy Spirit. He plays many roles and all critical to our belief, our purpose, and our service to God. Because of these roles, he goes by many names. We know him as counselor. We know him as breath of creation. Nehemiah called him the good spirit. In Corinthians 3.17, he is called Lord. We know him as eternal spirit, lamp at our feet, and helper. But no matter what we call him, the spirit dwells in us, and it is my belief that he never leaves. We just don't always hear him. As the band comes forward, let us not forget that like the disciples on the first Pentecost, Christ gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us do his work while we're here. We all have our own CB radios. Prayer is our message traveling the radio waves of love, and I mean true love. And the Holy Spirit serves as our antenna, it directs our message and makes the communication clear. And at the other end is God our Father and Christ our Savior. And they are keeping that line open. And it is back and forth, sisters and brothers. It is back and forth. But we control the volume. We control that volume by practicing our faith. We have to answer when we hear that whispered message. We have to do the work. We have to pray for the sick. We have to go where he asks us to go and stay as long as he needs us to. We've got to love without question, prejudice, or reason. So forgive us, and we need to forgive others. 
And most importantly, when we have no words to pray, he does that for us. Can we have the last scripture? Romans 26, 27. In certain ways we are weak, but the Spirit is here to help us. And for example, when we don't know what to pray for, the Spirit prays for us in ways that cannot be put into words. All of our thoughts are known to God. He can understand what is in the mind of the Spirit as the Spirit prays for God's people. As we close with this new beautiful song, I am so proud of our praise band. Go ahead. Yes. If you would like this church to be your new family, get your CB radios on and get them right up here. If you are of that mind but would like to do it privately, Stephen and I are available, and Joe, when he gets back from mission work this week, can be here for you too. So let's turn up that volume and praise God. Thank you very much, Billy. Okay, so um, before I ask you to stand and sing, this is a, as Billy mentioned, this is a brand new song. Um, I wrote this a couple of months ago, uh, actually inspired by Beth Ann Davenport's message uh, on Laity Sunday. Uh, I, she, she delivered a, a fantastic message. If you weren't here to hear it, I suggest going back and listening to the, uh, the recording of that message. It was absolutely wonderful. And it struck me in a, a way that uh, very few messages from any ministers ever have um, in a in very personal way. Uh, so I went and wrote this song. Um, I'm not going to like teach it to you or anything. You'll catch on pretty quick in, in typical fashion like I, I like to do. We're going to sing the main melody about 35,000 times before the end of this song. <laughs> so Jeremy actually texted me Wednesday night the half of the lyrics of the chorus and said, it's in my head and it will not leave. And that's, <laughs> I call that a win. I don't know. You guys, I'm sure I'll get a lot of angry texts this afternoon. If you would, please stand and sing with us this morning.
dressed down and bruised and broken. But the burden was lifted, you bore my shame. In two weeks, on June the 23rd, will be one worship service in the sanctuary at 11. Sunday school will take place at its regular time. After that, uh, we will have a grilling for a cause where there will be hamburgers and hot dogs served. Um, the only cost will be a donation that will benefit our youth and children's ministry. And there was an email sent this week as to what you could bring to help that be a success. If you would like that information, you can get with me or Bryce McDaniel. He is kind of organizing that. That's all I have. You got something, David? 